A lot of musicians, uh, when they're not working, they, they go around and hang out at the clubs, and if, if one of their friends is working, they'll ask them for some money. I did that too, but that's not, there's nothing sure about that. But when you go downtown and play for people that didn't ask you to play, they give you money because they like what you play, not because you asked them or anything. It's just, it's more of a give and take situation, which I could deal with. If I'm not dealing with music, I don't, I don't know what I would do to get any money. I don't know how to do nothing else but play the horn. My father didn't want me to be a musician. I hate to tell you this, but you know what he called my horn? He said, that's a starvation box. And my father was born under the sign of Taurus, which rules money. He spent his whole life trying to get some money. And he only lived 67 years. And he didn't ever get the money that he wanted. Well, I guess I, I ain't never starved yet. I ain't never had any money either, but at least I, I lived so far much longer than my father. My name when I was born was Maurice Benford McIntyre. And my African name is Carla Perusha Aradifta. Well, I moved to New York because there wasn't much going on in Chicago. And I could stretch across the ocean from here. I went with, with Newhall Richard Abrams to the Berlin Jazz Festival in 1973. And shortly after that, in 1974, I had this audition with Miles Davis. The guitar player, Pete Cozy, had got me the audition and told me the band was very loud. And for me to put some toilet paper or cotton in my ears because it's a very loud band, you know. So I, I had done that. I played something with him and he, he was pretty far out the night I played with him. And, I was had my eyes closed and I was playing like something crazy in uh, D minor, I remember, and he pulled the whole band off the stand and left me on the stage by myself. And I woke, I looked up, and he was, I was the only one on the stage. And uh, he came out in the paper the next day, the mystery saxophone player, upsets Miles Davis concert or something like that. <laughs> It's close as I know why you wrote it. I mean, the melody, even even when you play on the head, I just think, I think it hey, that's why I said brushes, because to me it seems like, I mean, you could create a lot with the brushes, and then you could go to sticks. But what Warren was doing sounds cool, don't it? Don't, 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 don't. Well, I, 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 don't, I don't think that it should be too much activity, so much activity. I'm just, I'm just hearing a, a little more solely on the percussion side of this piece. Hey. Everything's close. Yeah. Let, let's look over there for your direction, okay? Okay. Difton? Yeah, yeah, right okay. over there. Right over there. All right. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Keep okay, from the top. All right. I, I remember right, man. It's not that hard. Okay, Warren, would you would you uh, 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 start us off with Warren? Well, you, play, play you some. Just... You no, know, you can put some like some drum. Okay, things, some all right, all right. Cymbal.
wrote this song called Closeness. That's going to be the name of this record I'm putting out next month. And it has to do with the fact that I've been with that little girl I introduced y'all to for 20 years. I never been with no woman no damn 20 years. And she ain't never gave me no feeling that she was going to duck out on me. If things start getting bad, maybe I got sick or something. She's with me. She always says, it's me and you against the world. I was trying to play the song for the bass player, and I started crying. Cause when sometimes I play that song and it just uh, thinks about all the damn years we've been together, you know, and it's going on and on, you know. She she never gives me any feeling that she's gonna leave before the, the time to leave, you know. a little place like when I come to the Bronx I had this little room I was paying rent for and he came by there looking for a lady he just wanted some female company and I was staying at this guy named Gus house and um Gus brought him in there and said listen I got this nice young lady but you know she ain't selling nothing whatever like that but she's a nice person so if you want to talk to her or whatever I asked her it would it be okay and I was in the room watching the stories at the time, because I loved the stories, always was watching the stories. So he came in there at that time saying, somebody want to meet you, this is Catapurusha, Catapurusha, this is internet. And that's how I met him, so I invited him in my room. At the time, he had another girlfriend, but she was in a hospital. Her name was Yvette. She had uh, tuberculosis and AIDS. My mother sent me back over there to him. Uh, she put me in this, you know, I had some pink high heel shoes on with a nice pink top and a white mini skirt and stuff. And I went upstairs in his bedroom and I lifted up. I said, do I look nice? Like that, I lift my dress up. And his eyes popped out like that, like, oh my God. I was, <laughs> he was laying down in the bed. He was still asleep. <laughs> And then we started getting down and stuff, and then he got up and ran downtown and left me in there. And then I've been there ever since. of the time, you know, like the other day I wasn't making much money. And I realized it was after Thanksgiving, so I stopped playing Christmas Carol. Music is something that is a give and take thing. You, you're giving to people and they, they give to you, you know. So this is the Christmas time. So you can make a lot of money around Christmas time just by playing Christmas Carol. It's hard to be a musician because musicians have a tendency to spend too much when they get it and making themselves sick. Mostly jazz and then movie stars, they do that. Drugs is an occupational hazard, you know. It comes with the turf, you know. but. Uh, I try to get, get keep that under control. I get high, but as you get older, your body gets weaker, and you can feel it, and you know, you know that you can hurt yourself. I know the effects of getting high has on me now is much stronger than it used to be. My wife is only 40 years old, and so she's still young. She's like, oh, how can we do this? I said, well, relax, you know, you don't need that. <laughs> it's like talking to the wall. And trying to slow her down is like trying to slow down a, <laughs> a train or something. <laughs> And you get older, you 
supposed to get wiser. And it's with, with this wisdom comes, uh, you know, restrain and learn how to strain, restrain yourself. And control yourself. You got a lot of people live to be 90 years old. They, they get live to be that long because it's a reason. They're taking care of themselves. If you're ready to go, then go ahead. <laughs> this record and say about five weeks and I can't see out of my left eye I can't, I can't hardly write no music I got one song I want to play but I gotta get some more songs now that's what you call faith I don't know how this is gonna come together in one month but I believe it's gonna come together Okay, Michael, you check this out. One of y'all play this. It's a line for the basses. Oh, bass, bass it? Bass it, yeah. Bass it. Where's that break come? On 12th bar or 11th yeah. bar? I, I, well, it comes on 11th bar. bar. It's a downbeat of one, there's a break, then two, Third. then three, four. Yeah. Two. Back, rest, dap, dap. Two, three, four. Back, 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 back. D-Dot, bomb. Yeah. It was just a bass line. Okay. And I was going to solo around that. You know, it wasn't, if you got it together. All my life, I wondered, where the hell was I at on March 23rd, 1936? I was born on March 24th. I was watching TV the other day. I was watching this program. I had seen it before, and I liked the part of it was at the end. And uh, something happened. I was tired, and I fell asleep, you know. And I think that's what death is. That you're gonna get to a certain point, and you're gonna just go away, and you're not gonna know where you are. I don't know where I was on March 23rd, but I knew I was March 24th. I was born out of a woman. I remember sucking my mother's breath. That's the first memory I ever had. This all the money I got. Everything I'm scoring. How much is that? Thirty dollars. Give me ten. You keep. No, and I ain't staying with no twenty dollars all the way to Tuesday. No. No. $20? Man, you got more than that. No, I used it. I went to the store, I told you. I used it. Uh, give me some money so I can get you to, to, to Manhattan. Okay, I'll do that. Mm. How much you need? A dollar for the bus? You're a senior citizen. Right. Oh, you want five dollars? I think five will do it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, boy. I know it, I know it, Daddy. Daddy, mm -hmm. Daddy, listen to me. Look at me, I'm talking to you. Stop putting on them clothes. You see what time it is? Is she ready fast here? Yes. 
those pants right there. You got clean drawers, clean socks, nice clean long t-shirt like this. And put this sweater on. Take everything in the bathroom with you and get dressed. All right. Here, take your socks. You got your music ready to go? Yeah, yeah. This is it right here. The music? Yeah. Oh, you gonna keep those pants on? Nah, I'm going to like Why not? It looks nice with that sweater. But they, the bottom of them, I don't like. I Ain't don't nobody gonna it. be looking at the bottom of your pants. These pants look nice with this sweater. Let me straighten it out. Come on now, stop that. Huh? I'm not, I'm not lying. I won't tell you nothing wrong. I don't wear other pants. He looks better. I don't like the bottom of them. He don't, he don't like to match up. He like to look all wild looking. You put him in a uniform or a suit or outfit, he got to take off the jacket or either the, the, the uh, blazer or whatever and do something else with it. He just don't want to match up for nothing. <laughs> Looking like a Puerto Rican. I just found out not too long ago there was a man lived in this building, and I know him too. He was dead in his apartment for two months. That odor was coming all the way down through the building, you know, like from the elevator and all that, coming down through the building, because that's how loud it is. You know, when the body, the body is rotting and stuff like that, it's, whoa! This building is really not no place that you would want to be by yourself. That's why I have to make sure he's all right. That's my job. Daddy, come on out of that bathroom. Yeah. You running late. It's 10, 30, 11 o'clock and you still here in your house. I told you, come on, you gotta put a little pep to your step. Who you, my step is pepping. <laughs> His step is pepping. Yeah. I'm there for him, and I'm going to always be there for him, just like he's there for me. That's what I always say. It's just me and you against the world. Like, don't worry yourself about nothing and nobody else, because you call him and you need him, whatever like that, ain't nobody there. But I am. You know, when the chips is down, ain't nobody around. And I got your back. And I always had his back. But whatever he need, I wash for him, I cook for him, I clean for him. If I have to bathe him, whatever it is that he may need, I'm there. Whatever, I'm there. That's hell of a thing when you get somebody that you go with. And your, your relationship is timeless, and it doesn't seem like it's built on any mundane reason. She's just with me, you know. I call it closeness. Those fellas that went up there with, they weren't going to be up there bullshitting and fucking around. I, you know, I just don't remember what happened. <laughs> but, but what happened was, was very positive. 
Then there is a good record. A good record, man.